Good afternoon. Today I am going to talk on the postural deformities. There are three major spine postural deformities and rest are different at different locations and the joints. So today we are going to discuss about the postural deformities. But before understanding what are the deformities, uh, we need to understand what is a posture is. Posture is understood through the different perspective but as a term we can explain it on the basis of the guideline provided by the sciences. The definition of posture is posture is anatomical structure with a reference to alignment of the joints and the body part based on the responsible factor it may be in form of seizing, standing, laying or moving. Let's see what this definition says the posture is anatomical structure with a reference to alignment of the body joints and body part it means the posture which is based on anatomical structure so what is the anatomical structure is anatomical structure is a is a given as a reference point by the anatomy and uh, which can be understood by the direction of the body. The front part of the body is called anterior, the rear part is called posterior and the side one is called lateral and the middle part of like sternum is there, the middle part is called medial. Here the hands you can see the shoulder, elbow and the wrist joint is in one single alignment and this is a reference point of the alignment whereas if you go down to the hip joint the hips knee and the ankle uh, is in the one alignment so these are the reference point for the alignments and this is a center point that is a midline we can consider that you have a sternum at your chest which attach with the ribs and this is a reference point to draw a midline of the body it helps to read the movement direction forward, backward or lateral. It also helps to understand the body alignment whether the body is in the uh, anatomical form or it is not in the form, it is a deformed. So the deformed we can consider which is the postural deformations. So there is a something which is not right in the posture. To maintain a good posture, there are responsible factors who are working behind and these are mechanical efficiency of the muscles, balance of the body and the neuromuscular coordination. Posture is also an outcome of our daily changing positions and acquiring position or holding position for a longer duration. So it may be in the alignment, it may be out of the alignment or it may be in the form of the body or it may be deformed the body. So accordingly this posture get changed in a uh, category of good posture or the bad posture. There are several factors who are responsible to form a good posture or the bad posture. Few of the uh, causes are uh, enlisted over here. Some of the uh, reasons for the postural deformities are gifted by the heredity. Most of the postural deformity are on the basis of the habits and the lifestyle factors. The way we carry our body, the way we carry our postures, the way we stay in certain postures as an adaptation and the way we overload or underload our specific zone of muscles it is all about the diet what you eat so the minerals are very essential the fat protein uh, are very essential for composing a different aspects or factors of the body so these are the very important factor which are directly responsible for your any posture health or diseases is one of the reason of good or bad posture if you are very healthy if you are fit enough or if you are uh, not meet in any emergency like accidents so the chances of deforming the body very less and we can have a good posture but vice versa if any accidental issue happens the alignment of the body may change and uh, we have to face the deformed posture so these are the uh, main factors or the reasons you can say behind the good or bad posture 
Now we will see what are the postural deformities. Yeah, I am going to quote the five postural deformities. There are many more, uh, but these fives are more general and uh, very uh, identical postural deformities. The name is given on the screen: typhosis, lordosis, scoliosis, flat foot, and enoch. So in this video we will understand what is a kyphosis, what are the reasons behind kyphosis and uh, what are the preventive measures and what kind of treatment we can give to overcome the kyphosis kind of postural deformities. So first of all we will understand what is a kyphosis. Kyphosis is an exaggeration or the increase in the amount of the normal convexity of the thoracic region of the spine. So here we can consider exaggeration as a worse situation of that particular uh, uh, cervical uh, zone where the curve is more outward and it is not maintaining the normal shape of the spine. It is not a neutral shape of the spine. It is more curvature towards the outside and it looks like something we carry on a back. It projected outside just like a hump. It is also seen that the neck position is lean forward. It, it is in a protraction phase so that the load is coming on the body because it shifts from its center of gravity. And again to maintain that posture, the shoulders uh, or the neck region, uh, the muscles are involved to holding that posture. So they are also getting used or overused over a period of time. In this posture, the shoulders also get a rounded and a move forward direction so that the pectoral part or the chest part get shrink in the length size whereas the posterior part of the back is extend which not only give impact on the neck extensor muscles or the local muscles at the uh, upper back but it is impacting on an entire back extensor and uh, therefore it is very essential to treat these all muscles together rather than only the local muscles. A body is adopted a certain lifestyles and the positions which is directly impacting on this uh, extensors. Here you can see the pictures of the handling mobile laptops or the people working on a writing uh, HS paper and pen work. So this one leads to many complications just like it shrunk down the uh, the pectoral region and it impacting on the lung capacities uh, your posterior muscles get overused it fatigue and it reduces its potential likewise the range of motion at the joints and because you are sitting sedentary because you have acquired that particular posture your nerve somewhere get compressed and because of that it may impact on the circulation and further it may lead to the leg lower lower limbs or lower part of the body get paralyzed to treat uh, such kind of deformities uh, certain uh, exercises are recommended which should be performed on the daily basis Kyphosis uh, posture doesn't impact only on a local upper back muscles but it is impacting on an entire back muscles that is extensor muscles whether it is a deep or superficial. As the kyphosis is an outcome of the wrongly adopted chronic posture throughout the life as a lifestyle pattern, we need to work on the muscles first to make them free from the stiffness. Palm roller can be used uh, throughout the uh, back extensor muscles to remove the stiffness or reduce the stiffness and uh, to activate the muscle for, for strength training based exercises so that uh, there, sh there will be no jerk, there will, there will be no injury and uh, the motive behind doing these exercises can be fulfilled. After completing uh, the workout for the stiffness, we have to focus on the alignment of the uh, body part which is deformed so we have to bother about bringing our chin or bringing our head back so we can do the seated uh, chin tuck so that uh, we can place our neck at the right place and we can bother to neutralize our uh, spine so we can do while seated while laying also it is depends upon the how severe kyphosis is and how much you are tolerating the load 
Next, we have to rectify the shoulder placement to align the shoulder back to the anatomical structure. We need to work on the scapula movement in a retraction and protraction fashion as well as we have to work, uh, it is in a lateral uh, way. So, we need to do certain exercises with a resistance band or with a stabilized ball or any other light object uh, which will help to condition that muscle from low intensity to high intensity load. Next, to rectify the neutral spine, we have to uh, bother while we are sitting. We have to sit in upright position and we ensure that we are sitting on the hip bone. So using the hip bone and sitting in upright position helps to neutralize the spine. Now we will see some of the strengthening exercise. So swimming is one of the very good exercise because in water with a light weight uh, our extensor, back extensor muscles getting conditioning because the body do the rotations using the arms uh, where the, uh, the muscle attached to the shoulder joint, shoulder plates and the neck because we keep turning the necks uh, so that we keep turning the torso as per the strokes and therefore the entire back extensor muscle involved it is in extended form and it is very good uh, exercise to condition our uh, weak muscles. As a remedy, there are uh, some static form of exercises, just like a Chakrasana and Bhujangasana, where the good stretch is given to the spine. The extensor muscle and the all associated small and big muscles get good stretch. Standing and bending backward as well as coming to the four points, kneeling and uh, alternate raising the hands. The uh, yogic postures for the bending and twisting of the spine as well as steady uh, and slow stretches help to condition the muscles and activate to perform the strengthen, strengthening task. Likewise, uh, bending, twisting the spine and stretching the muscles associated to the spine gives very good effective results to overcome kyphosis.